welcome to another big episode of Flea Market Fantasy, the world's second greatest Bronze Age era comic book podcast. Joining me as always is new Mike L, Kevin Jank. I don't know what show you thought you were doing. This <laughs> yeah. <time. laughs> I, was, I was a little confused there. <laughs> You're just making word salad. But, but we're back. And Jank, it was your pick this week. Tell the kids what you chose. I picked Shauna the She-Devil, number four, from 1972. Yeah, Shauna the She-Devil. I guess to be specific. Yeah, I had this on my list as well. I've, I've been meaning to pick a Shauna for a while, so I'm glad you picked her. And um, what do you know about Shauna the She-Devil? Uh, a little bit. I mean, I always remember seeing her, you know, with Kazar down in the Savage Land. And uh, actually, one of the reasons I picked this was because I was just recently, um, I've been reading the 1990s Kazar series a little oh, bit, uh, which I had always kind of wanted to read because it had awesome art by Adam Kubert, or not Adam Kubert, but Andy Kubert, the one from uh, X-Men. Like, basically, he went Both right from X-Men to doing... Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, he went right from X-Men to doing uh, this Kazar series. Oh, okay. A little bit. I was just going to say, both Kuberts are good. You know, yeah, I, like I love them both. So. Yeah. Um, so the art's very good. So I've been reading that recently. And then I guess I think he only made it to about issue 11 and then the series continued to 20. But I probably won't even continue past that because okay. the art looks really bad. And I think Mark Wade, who was writing it, left and he like got replaced by Christopher Priest, who I did not like his run on hey. Dead. I can't imagine his run on Kazar is going to be much better. Uh, Jim Owsley is Christopher Priest, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. His name. Uh, but anyway, uh, Kazar, we've never done a Kazar book on this show. No, we got to do that at some point, too. Yeah, probably will. Uh, so, all right, so that's why you chose this, Shauna. This yeah. Shauna. Did you say Shauna yeah, appeared that. in that Kazar book? Oh, yeah, definitely. There's a, uh, it's kind of like they have a son by this point. He's a baby. Oh, yeah, so they're married uh, and everything? Yep, yep, they're definitely married. Uh, the series kind of picks up where there's a little bit of a rift between the two of them, like, she is still very much, you know, Savage Land, no technology, all kind of stuff like that. <laughs> but uh Kazar's kind of got the bug where he's like, he's hiding Game Boys and CD players and shit. <laughs> but she doesn't know about so. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a little bit of tension there. He has a monkey a day account on Instagram where he posts <laughs> a different champ every day. And, okay, look at this. Because that was my idea, but then Kazar took yep. it. All right, so who is Shauna of, the She Devil? Of, he retweets Oscar tweets a lot. Oh no, that's he's really McCain. stealing all your all your <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah, he can't be doing that. <laughs> but uh, Shauna the She Devil, her real name is Shauna O'Hara. Yeah, Shauna O'Hara, and uh, she was created by Carol Suling, S E U L I N G Suling, and George Tuska. And Shauna Number One came out in 1972. She was introduced. We talked about this before on the show when we did Beware the Claws of the Cat. Because oh, okay. Stanley and Roy Thomas wanted to introduce some female led characters to try and get girls into reading comic books. And Roy Thomas also had the idea of let's get female creators to write the book. You know? So yeah. in nineteen seventy two they introduced Beware the Claws of the Cat, Shauna the She Devil, and Night Nurse. Ooh, Night Nurse, yeah. We, we've never done Night Nurse on this uh, here book, uh, this here podcast. Night, Night Nurse oh, is a weird character to have a give her her own book. She's not even like a hero, really. She just goes well, around and patches people up. <laughs> in the old days, she had nothing to do with superheroes at all. It was basically just a straight <laughs> nurse hospital book. Oh. Yeah, so she's not yeah. even helping out Luke Cage or anything back in the old days. So, yeah. It's basically the, like the comic version of those old nurse movies that like Quentin Tarantino loves, like the Grindhouse nurse movies are just yeah. movies. <laughs> Well, no, not that because it was a comic book, <laughs> but it was basically like General Hospital, a soap opera. Oh, okay. But I think there was kind of like a murder involved or something, and she had to solve it or something. I don't know. Maybe we'll do a night nurse someday. Yeah. So, but anyway, so Roy Thomas, he back in 1972, there weren't a lot of female comic book writers. You know, and so he asked. Uh, he had a friend named Phil Sewling. Uh, we again, we've given this I'm back familiar. to you. He was a comic book convention organizer and distributor. He's the fellow who came up with the idea for direct market distribution to comic book shops. Oh, so look at that. that! That's all him. And his wife at the time was Carol. They they, they later divorced. 
But she would help him organize the comic book conventions, and I guess she would write some material for those. I don't know what exactly. Hmm. Um, oh, like but, copy stuff? Probably. Yeah, probably, just like copy. Programming and guy. So Roy Thomas, he says, hey, Carol, would you like to write a comic book? She said, okay. So she, she, she created. I don't know what they are, but sure, why not? <laughs> so she came up with Shauna the She Devil, and uh, in 2010 she uh, gave an interview with somebody. I, I found it on the Wikipedia. I do extensive research. I go to yeah. Wikipedia and then I'm done. Uh, she says everything is always correct, and no one ever puts in false information. No, of course not. <laughs> uh, there's a quote here from her, and she says, "My instructions were to make Shauna someone who would fit in with the times." And also was prone to a little more violence than Sheena of the other jungle queens or the other jungle queens of the past. Now, we have a history with Sheena mm-hmm. because we watched that film on the LCS Hockey Radio Show. Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, starring the lovely Tanya Roberts and a couple chimps. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Chimps who were throwing grenades. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs> uh, chimps throwing grenades. So, uh, but Sheena and Shauna, I don't know, if I'm going to rip off Sheena, maybe give her a name completely different, you know? Yeah. That's just me. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> They're not even cute. trying. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> At least GoBots had the decency to not n- n- name yeah. themselves like Transmorphers. <laughs> they changed it from, you know. <laughs> exactly. Make it something different. They mix it up a little bit. So, uh, but they did come up with, uh, Shauna, cause I even get confused, like, which is which? Sheena's the old <laughs> one. But now thanks to Tanya Roberts, I remember. Yeah, Sheena is the non-Marvel one. Alright. <laughs> so Shauna, her backstory is she is the daughter of a German diamond miner named Gerald O'Hara. <laughs> that sounds and, like a German name. I, maybe it's not German. Maybe I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, I gotta check Wikipedia again. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds Irish, right? Yeah, sure right. does. <laughs> I, I picture like Chief O'Hara from the old Batman show. Yeah. I probably wrote Faith that. and Begora. Yeah, I probably my notes. I was drunk. I don't know what I said. <laughs> Sorry, let's just do that again. Sean is the daughter of a diamond miner who could possibly <laughs> be Irish, named Gerald O'Hara, and uh, she was born in Africa and raised in Zaire until the age of six. Right. That that's when something sad happened. Uh oh, is this apparently, where the dead cats come in? <laughs> partly. <laughs> so uh, apparently, uh, her mother was uh, keeping a leopard or something, or leopards, and it went rogue. Uh oh, you know the rogue leopards are. So the dad went to hunt it down and kill it. But apparently, his wife and uh, Sean, his mother, looked shockingly like a leopard because he shot her. Oh, <laughs> wow. wow, that's uh, this sounds like a Columbo like episode. Dick Cheney moves like right. when they go hunting. But yeah, this sounds like a Columbo episode, too, right? The the guy wants to get yeah. his wife. He says, come on, we'll go hunting for that leopard. And then he shoots his wife. Oh, it was an accident. One of them deals. But apparently, yeah, I guess it sounds it like the, uh, that one with uh, Ricardo Montalban with the bull. Remember? Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, the, the bull killed him. Totally <laughs> not me. So uh, but apparently it was an accident and uh, he, he killed uh, his wife there. So the little girl, Shauna, she was uh, traumatized by this event, naturally, yeah. as you would be. <laughs> Absolutely. So she, right there, she committed to have a lifelong quest of, uh, uh, what did she want to do? Just uh, get murder rid of firearms. <laughs> no, 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 not to murder her father. <laughs> a crusade against all firearms. She didn't want people gotcha. to use guns. All right? She didn't want to use guns. Uh, also, her father... He sent her to go uh, live with some relatives in the United States because now he's a single dad and he doesn't want her cramping his style. So oh, yeah. She lives her. in San Francisco, right? Uh, possibly. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> sounds right. I know she has some some experience there. So then she became an Olympic athlete in swimming and track and field. Wow. And she also became a licensed veterinarian. <laughs> she was busy. She was very busy. <laughs> if I so, could get well, off to go get food, that's the big day for me. Like, yeah, she's out doing all these things. A big day for me is when I only take one nap. But uh, she's doing all this. <laughs> so uh, she was. Then she started working as a zoologist at the Central Park Municipal Zoo in New York City. 
I didn't even know Central Park had a zoo. <laughs> uh, Apparently, yeah, sure. I think I it's feel legit. like any. Yeah, I feel like every video game, like you know, Ninja Turtles or something, that's set in New oh, York, there's always right. a zoo level where you have to go <laughs> fight at. So. <laughs> So, uh, she was a, working there, and she was taking care of a leopard named Jelani. J-U-L-A-N-I. Jelani. Not Giuliani. Yeah. Very Jelani. different. Worker. Yeah, this leopard did not wear a toupee. <laughs> so, uh, at some point, if it though. Did, it might have looked a lot like Shauna's mom. <laughs> and her dad might shoot it. <laughs> but I don't know what happened. But for some reason, a, a guard at the zoo shot Jelani and killed her. Yeah, he went on some kind of rampage, it sounds like. Oh, yeah. So once again, yeah. the fire, the firearms come back to bite Sean in the ass. You know, yep. she didn't get uh, no gun control and then bang, killed Jelani. So Jelani had two cubs, Ina and Beery. Yeah. And I think that means like daylight and nighttime or something or dark and light or something like that. Oh, okay. That makes sense. One of them's like a dark, you know, black leopard, and the other one's like a leopard, you know, it's orange with yeah. the spot. Yes. So that makes sense. Um, so the zoo director said, hey, hey, she- Shauna. Look, I even wrote Sheena in my notes. That's how you can confuse it. He said, hey, Shauna, why don't you take Jelani's cubs there, take them back to an African nature reserve, you know, and uh, let them grow up there in Africa. So she's like, all right, I'll do that. Plan. Yeah, so that's what she did. She went to Africa. And she took the little lion, the leopard cubs with her. Uh, but then when she got there, she's like, oh, my God, there's poachers everywhere. These damn poachers. So she stayed uh, in Africa. And she felt a connection to the natural world. So she stayed there, and she pro- she protected that nature reserve from poachers. Okay. And that's the story. That's how she became Shauna, the she-devil. <laughs> That's, That's how it. she learned that the best way to fight people is without shoes on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just wear leopard print underpants and a bikini top. Yep. And, that's and run around from without shoes. Crack. Because she has no, like at this point in her history, she has no superpowers. She's just a very athletic lady. Yeah. Does she eventually get superpowers? From what I, I was able to read from my various sources, Wikipedia, <laughs> At some point, she she's she dies and is resurrected by the waters of the Savage Land or something, some uh-huh. mystical waters. And it and when she was reborn, kind of, I, I think she died. They use the term resurrected, so that means she died, right? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, everyone in comics has died at least yeah. twice by now. So <laughs> I'm sure she so did. After she came back, she then had the strength of ten men, just like oh, me. Ooh. I also have the strength of ten men. <laughs> and she and she can run up to f- at fifty miles an hour for up to like an hour at a time. So, <laughs> that's very fast. Okay, yeah, that's pretty yeah. fast for a person. Yeah, 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 fifty miles. Okay, away. so she's kind of like you know not even quite Captain America, but like what you thought Captain America was. It was like the best of a person could be. Not quite super. Well, I guess no. Ten men is still pretty super. Yeah, that's kind of super strong. Yeah, I, it's pretty super. So I don't know where you'd put her on the uh, scale of strength. Probably yeah. less than Spider-Man, right? Yeah, definitely less than Spider-Man. More than Wolverine, obviously. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, because Captain America, I'm always hazy on Captain America. You know? Yeah. Because I in mean, the movies, he's, he's doing things that no human can do. <laughs> like holding on that helicopter and yes. keeping it from lifting off. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Jumping off motorcycles and flipping and everything. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But she's strong these days. But back here, what we're doing here today in 1972, she's just a normal lady. Normal lady. Okay. Yep, that sounds about right. All right, the series ran for five issues. So it was a smashing success. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, all three of the titles that they introduced did not last. They all yeah kind of tapped out. Um, <laughs> I know Night Nurse is only four or five. Uh, Cause of the Cat may have gone maybe one or two longer, but I can't even remember. Uh, they they probably are all just dead at five issues. Uh, they Carol's, all start like the same month, like or I think was so. it kind of stagnant? Okay, it was like their big push so. this one month, and then oh shit, but I don't even all start at the same time. I didn't even <laughs> confirm that. I just assumed, you know. But uh, yeah. 
Uh, so this Carol Suling, she wrote the first four issues. But Steve Gerber was brought in to provide additional dialogue because when Stan Lee and Roy Thomas got the book, they're like, yeah, there's not enough talking. <laughs> so and and this was Steve Gerber's first writing professional gig at Marvel was writing the additional dialogue for Shauna. So that's something. Cool. And and then when she left after issue four, Steve Gerber did issue five. He was the oh, writer. okay. This is the one to clean up and close the place down. Yeah. Now the artist uh, George Tuska drew issue one. Then Ross Andrew was brought in to do issues two, three, four, and five. And we've talked about Ross Andrew. This is a A N D R U Andrew. And mm -hmm. we've talked about him before. He was on Spider Man after John Romata Sr. I was a big, I'm a big fan of Ross Andrew. Yeah, he, he draws a good right. Sheena or Shauna. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's so easy to do. It. Yeah, it's Sean. Uh, also, he did that Doc Savage book that we reviewed here on Flea Market Fantasy. So if you want to know more about Ross Andrew's career, go listen to the Doc Savage episode. Sure. The cover for this book was John Romita Sr., and he did the covers for issues four and five. John Buscema did the cover for issue three, and Jim Steranko did one and two. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? That's pretty nice. Yeah, Jim Steranko. So there you go. Anything else about Shauna we should know before getting into this? Uh... Not really. <laughs> like I said, I always remember her and Kazar bopping around the Savage Land together. Whenever the X-Men or Spider-Man would go down there, they would always meet up with them. And <laughs> They've never been my favorite characters, but, you know, in, in small doses, they can be interesting. I definitely like the Savage Land. It's just not one of my favorite things. I'm glad it exists in the Marvel Universe. It's just, I don't know. There aren't a whole lot of amazing Savage Land stories. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of one. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's always nice, you know. Your heroes will uh, like jump down there for like an issue, and then you know pop back. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever, whatever. Fight some dinosaurs. It's cool. Uh, Shauna's costume. I'm looking at this cover here. Uh, yeah, she's got the leopard print bikini top, leopard print underpants, and then she's got like, are those teeth on the necklace? Yeah, it sure looks like it. Yeah, yeah. She has like a necklace of teeth like around her, or is that just connected to the top? It's the straps, yeah, of the yeah. the top. <laughs> and then on the on the upper arms, on each arm, she has like a little strap with teeth hanging off. And then on the middle of the calves, she has a string with like teeth hanging off. Yeah, That's a lot of teeth. Whatever the fuck those are. Yeah, but like you said, no shoes. So. <laughs> Just running around barefoot. It does not look comfortable. A lot of ringworm in the Savage Land. I would <laughs> yeah. be careful about that. All right, Jank, why don't you describe the rest of this cover for us? Uh, it's kind of, it's a little bit of a mess. <laughs> I like <laughs> the art. It's just, it's very busy. Uh, so we got a purple banner across the top saying Shauna the She-Devil, Marvel Comics Group. Uh, we got the price and everything. And then we got a, instead of a character box, we got a little circle with, uh, with Shauna the She-Devil in it. Um, holding a knife and just kind of pointing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of looks like I'm she's doing some kind of ritual or something. I'm guessing that's it kind of looks like John Romita, right? John Romita Sr. Yeah. Guessing that's him. Right. And this is a uh, twenty cents. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, those were the days. I know. What a deal! I'm <laughs> five bucks for a dollar. Ah, oh, what a deal! Jesus. Um, <laughs> so then we uh, we get the title on a red background, John and the She Devil, and then the that kind of takes up the first probably and quarter the title's page. in yellow as well. Yeah. So yellow on red. So then the bottom, like, two-thirds of the page, I would say, is uh, we got Shauna riding on a rhino, and her leopards are watching, and she's like, To me, my pets, the rhino must not reach the nearby crowds at any cost, even my life. Yeah. And then we also get a circle where just kind of sandwiched in there. It says, And don't look now, leopard lady, but here comes the man called Mandrill. And we just get a little yeah. shot of, like, Mandrill's face and hand. <laughs> and he's a monkey man. <laughs> That's right, he's a monkey man. <laughs> yeah, he's a baboon, you know? Like a yep. baboon man, I guess. Kind of like our <laughs> beloved Shakma. Yeah, that's right. Because <laughs> he's got, like, the baboon coloring on the face, you know, the stripes or whatever. Like, baboons have that, right? Or no? Did yeah. I just invent that? <laughs> <laughs> they definitely have that know. same kind of face, I would say. I don't yeah. know if they have, they're as colorful. Yeah, he, he's monkey. 
because I'm uh, very particular when I designate the various primates, you know. Yeah. So because they're, you know, a monkey and a chimp are two different things. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's true. So I think baboon. Uh, I I can't remember where he falls into it. Um, <laughs> he's not a chimp. He's not with a chimp. No, um, but is he a monkey or an ape? I guess is the yeah. question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, there is a different kind of a chimp uh, called a a, a bo uh, fuck a a boobon or a bobin bobin, <laughs> but not a baboon. But it looks like a Let chimp, but it's slightly different. Mandrill is a large old world monkey native to West South, Central yeah. Africa. So it is a monkey. All right. All right, so there you go. It is officially a monkey. People are like, why do you care? Because I'm writing a book right now about a talking chimp. And yep. one of the big ta- the big running jokes is people call him a monkey, and he has to always correct them. And now he's a chimp. Yeah. <laughs> so I should I should know the difference. All right, but anyway. So we open up the book. Uh, we get the big splash page here. Uh, Sean of the She-Devil. Cry Mandrill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a weird title. Yeah, I feel like they lean on the cry thing a lot. Yeah. Which but keep in mind, this like, is 1972. Book. Yeah. This is 19, <laughs> so this is very early in the game. So they were That's, pioneering the use of cry, whatever. It's yeah. only been used like 140 times by this point. <laughs> Whereas now it's been you know, 35,000. But we get a nice splash page of a, uh, in the foreground, we have uh, Shauna. I almost called her Sheena. Shauna jumping <laughs> down. Looking great. Oh, she has a knife uh, on her uh, underpants as well. That's yeah. Scary. Hey, in the book, she has a holster in her underpants. In the book, she doesn't have the things around her calves or her. her uh, I can't tell if it's her arm on both arms, but she has the teeth thing around her right arm. All right. Yeah. She, now, so now like she has hair bands, I think, around her. Uh, some well, red hair ties around her one wrist. Yeah, if you turn back or if you turn forward, she has the teeth around her left calf. I don't know. Oh, yeah, they're there. Yeah, so I guess the leg, is, the right leg, is blocking it here in this. I guess she puts um, it on her right arm and her left calf. <laughs> but then she also has them on her left arm in another page. So I don't know. Ross Andrew is playing fast and loose <laughs> with the costume design. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> don't worry about it. But she looks great. She looks great. Mm-hmm. And, and she's really jumping. Bad. She's jumping down, and the l- one leopard is behind her, and we see the rhino running at us. Uh, from the uh, background kind of coming toward the camera and the, the perspective is tilted as well. This is a great little splash page. Oh, a big yeah. Yeah. I like it. Oh, look, the other little leopard is coming in from the top, right? His claws coming in. Rawr. He's like, rawr, rawr. You did a good job of drawing a rhino. It's kind of tough to do. I think <laughs> but it looks pretty good. Yeah, it does. Uh, the anchor here is Vince Coletta. Vince Coletta. Uh, so, all right, Jank, uh, walk us through these first few pages here. What's Shauna doing? <laughs> uh, so this rhino is out of control. It's just running around, you know, trying to smash shit. So Shauna's taking it on herself to try to wrangle him and uh, get him to calm down. So she just kind of grabs onto his horn and flips over him and so that she can get on his back. And um, she's using her strength, her, you know, Olympian strength, I guess, because she's not super yet to see if it's sufficient to tame this rhino. Uh, meanwhile, her buddy, I forget his name, Patrick? <laughs> oh, yeah, she has a fella here, uh, Patrick something. Yeah, yeah. he's driving a, a Jeep, so she, he's going to help out. Um, so she's on his back, on this rhino's back, and she says, stay back, I know what I'm doing, I hope. And we get this shot of her with a closed yeah. mouth near the... Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it was a coloring mishap. I, oh, I think... Okay. Uh, Andrew meant those to be teeth at the bottom, and they they colored them both oh, red oh, to make it look like they're closed lips. Yeah, but, yeah. The, the next panel mentions that she's biting the one bite to the rhino's ear will make him do what I want, but it looks like she's just kind of humming into it <laughs> because we just see her lips on top of the ear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, just a coloring mishap that'll happen. Oh, oops. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, she she steers the rhino into a blind alley. He's like, yeah. just a blind alley I was looking for. Thank God it was there. <laughs> and uh, so she steers the rhino, and then her buddy Patrick pulls the Jeep behind her. So the rhino is trapped now between yep. the Jeep and the, and the alley. So, yeah, it all worked out, I guess. 
about. Yeah, it was a whole like three page adventure, but for some reason that made the cover. <laughs> it's like <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> yeah, you think it would have been a little bit more dramatic if it's pictured on the cover. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. It's, but it's a good way to get you involved into a story right away. Have a little action sequence like that to show Shayna uh, using her, well, not her powers, but her talents and her skills, you know. Yeah, her uh, her gymnastics. <laughs> she clearly has some strong thighs. And she wrapped them around the rhino's head and, and steered the rhino with her thighs. So that's, <laughs> that's what you want in a woman. And a good so, job uh, fight onto a rhino's ear. I feel like that'd be tough. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, her little leopards show up, and uh, they're all reunited. And she's like, hey, what's going on? And uh, so what is, this other guy comes running up, and he says, hey, that rhino is mine. You know, he ran away. Thanks for uh, saving him there. Um, and then she That's says, hey. Offensive. Ha- you don't think I stole it, did, did you? <laughs> He's like, no, no. <laughs> you got me all wrong. I'm here to thank you. I was yeah. getting drunk and uh, grab-assing, and the <laughs> rhino got away. <laughs> so uh, then Patrick says, hey, why don't we go to the hotel there uh, for dinner or whatnot? And she's like, all right, yeah. So we always get a scene. Anytime there's a comic book where there's a female lead, we always have to see her taking a shower. <laughs> That's it's just, right. It's just <laughs> one of the things you have to do. <laughs> hey, this was written by a woman, so. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Uh, Shauna is taking a shower. We, of course, see that the shower curtain is cutting down, but we see a little bit of her naked back and a little mm-hmm. bit of hip. But the shower curtain is obscuring the uh, the butt. So we don't get to see Shauna's butt. Yep. Uh, then the phones are ringing. I showers with the with the curtain so open. <laughs> it is weird. Yeah, the floor is going to get <laughs> so wet. You yeah, know, the water is just going to be all over the floor. Uh, so but then the pleased with her. The phone rings and she says, "I think I found what I hate most about civilization: yep. the shower and the phone together." It's a little <laughs> awkward. It's a little awkward. That is the worst, though. <laughs> yeah. Why couldn't she just say uh, the phone ringing when I'm in the shower? But like saying oh, like yeah. the phone in the shower together. I don't know. It's just weird. <laughs> I hate when the phone in the shower get together and start making it. Yeah. App. Yeah. I was confused. Just say I hate when the phone rings when I'm in the shower. It's like, wait. Yep. Uh, so she goes to get the phone and now we get some flashbacks to how she ended up where she is. And flashbacks or mind flashes. <laughs> yeah. They- <laughs> <laughs> yes, mind flash, exclamation, or, or just colon. I always thought it was an exclamation point. Mind flash. I've never heard the term mind flash. <laughs> Me neither. So, <laughs> I'm going to start using that more often, though. <laughs> yeah. So the awful moment months ago when Shauna learned of the zoo massacre, that all the great cats had been destroyed, shot by a mindless sadist. Oh, that was that guard. Yeah. yeah he, was that, he was the mindless Shot all sadist. of the cats, apparently. <laughs> and then we go mind flash again in the next panel. How she left the states, took to the jungle, became what she is—the leopard woman, the she devil. How about that, the leopard woman. And then we see her talking on the phone, still naked except for the towel covering her. Yeah, showing a lot of leg. And uh, she's like, "Hey, uh, please, someone's calling." And are they doing a crank call or just a lot of heavy breathing or what's going on? I forget what the hell here. Uh, well, so, no, she's somebody's calling her, but whoever it is gets uh, yanked by two other guys. Yeah. Two guys grab him out of the phone booth, and they're like, silence him. But you think she would hear that because they're yeah. just – the receiver's off the hook. <laughs> He's yelling, silence him. <laughs> she's like, oh, no, nope. I don't know what that was. Uh, but then uh, rap, rap at the door. It's her buddy Patrick. It's time for dinner. And she's still uh, mostly naked just in her leopard underpants. And yeah. uh, we see some naked back. A little hint of side bib, if you look. Just a little, yep. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Uh, but she changes clothes, and her and Patrick go to dinner, and she takes the leopards with her to dinner, her two leopard <laughs> buddies. That's, that's weird. I know that this dinner is like, they don't even know who's inviting them or why, but they're yeah. like, yeah, let's go. Why not? Yeah, let's this is very, farm. this is like an old Agatha Christie mystery or something. They're invited to a dinner. Yeah. They don't know who the, here we go, show up at the dinner. And, uh, <laughs> Um, so who, who's inviting them to this dinner? They, they show up with a bunch of people there, Jank. There's a couple other guys there. And, mm-hmm. but who's the host of the dinner? Uh, well, a guy comes out who is, uh, wearing kind of like a, you know, an outfit like Beast Man from He-Man kind of a little bit. <laughs> yeah, furry <laughs> underpants. Stuff. Yeah, furry underpants. <laughs> and, uh, he's just got like a black cloak 
on his head, essentially. Like a yeah, you know, like an executioner's hood. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like he's wearing a napkin over his face. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, we don't know who it is yet. But uh, as we can guess from the cover, it's probably Mandrill. <laughs> hey, like Cobra Commander. Remember Cobra Commander had that? Yeah, it's very Cobra Commander. Yeah, you know? yeah. I see him in that one panel. I'm like, oh yeah, it looks like Cobra Commander in furry underpants. Uh, yeah. Which may have been his thing. We can't judge. Uh, Sean, his cats are going nuts when this guy walks in the room. Yeah. They're like, all right, what's up? You don't like monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's spoiler alert. The guy under the hood, it's Mandrill, Monkey Man. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he, uh, he has an army of uh, foxy ladies who are also, uh, they're, they're toting guns, and they have tattooed on their faces like the Mandrill coloring the stripes the pink and blue stripes on the cheeks yeah, yeah. which uh that sucks because like <laughs> we have yeah. mandrill his mutant he's a mutant basically and we don't really find this out in this issue but his thing is he's a mutant but he can control the minds of women so really he's controlling them to do all this so if they ever Wait. get controlled they're going to be fucked up when they realize we have, we now have this monkey tattoo on our face for yeah, I forgot. I forgot to read up on Mandrill at all. Usually, I would research Mandrill. Completely forgot. Um, yeah. <laughs> I assumed his power was to be able to control monkeys. He can control women. Oh. Yep. What a power yeah. that is. Oh he's uh, he's a bit of a creep, from what I understand. Uh, and there's, I guess, well, there was some references in, in, a, in a Daredevil issue that he, uh, you know, made the sweet, sweet love to Black Widow while using what? his powers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good lord. So he just uh, raped the Black Widow. Uh, but yeah. what what about uh, Shauna? How could he not just, you know, Yeah, that's over the Shauna? thing. It doesn't make sense because she's just like, oh, any woman could resist you if they wanted to. <laughs> so it's like, oh. oh, that's right. She did say that. Yeah. <laughs> I read this a few days ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they don't really describe his powers in here at all. It's kind of like, oh, OK. I just thought he's a monkey man who could control yeah. monkeys. <laughs> You'd think that'd be enough. Hey, well, I'm a little disappointed that he can't. Right side, I just created a new supervillain. <laughs> so, <laughs> Maybe your monkey detective can go after him. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, Mandrill, he, uh, he's introducing, he still has the hood on, and he's introducing the other guys around the table. Uh, there's Lem Stover, Diamond Merchant. <laughs> uh, oh, because Mandrill, he tells him his plan. He wants to overthrow, <coughs> excuse me, three African nations. Yep. He doesn't name the nations, all under so. one ruler. He does, does he identify the nations? He just says three. Uh, I don't know. Oh. Probably whichever ones you know, look the nicest at the time. <laughs> so he went, yeah, like you said, he wants to put them under one rule, his own. And he's got Lem Stover, the diamond merchant, who will fund the uh, the scheme. Then you have mm-hmm. Lord Dunbar Ainsley of Britain. He will make the necessary diplomatic connections. Yeah, how about that? And uh, yeah. these are old white dudes. These are old white dudes. And uh, <laughs> yep. oh, here, here's an African fellow. And he says, "In General Mojo, you will yeah, lead the most name. powerful army in all Africa at a salary commensurate with your vast capability." He's kind of like uh, he's got an eye patch. Yeah, that's how you know he's, he's been he's, shit. Yeah, or he got scratched <laughs> really? by a cat. He could have been scratched <laughs> yeah. by a cat. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, uh, but he's wearing a bow tie and a carnation. He's a fancy guy. And, and then we have uh, Sean, his buddy Patrick McShane. He will he will design and head my civil service. Right, so he's delivering the mail. That's what he's doing. All right. <laughs> and then Shauna O'Hara, the she devil with a PhD. You will be the charismatic figure I need to rally the minions to my cause. <laughs> and uh, th- this page, it's uh, six panels. The top panel, we see Mandrill and his two lady uh, ser- uh, servants there. And then we get a close-up of each of their faces. And I, I, I like this page. This is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, like I don't it. quite get uh, why he needed Shauna for this. She seems like a bad choice. <laughs> like, all like, she's bringing to the table is charisma. And Yeah, she's like, a she's foxy a, blonde. Yeah, she's but she's a, a superhero. Blonde. That's probably not someone you want to bring in. <laughs> <laughs> well, at, at this point, I again, this is only issue four of Shauna. So um, I don't know if she's too established as a superhero at this point. But she is uh, fighting off poachers and everything. So maybe in the first three issues, she's established herself as a national, uh, like a a celebrity of some sort. Like, oh, who's this famous lady? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, Foxy Blonde. Yeah. National hero. (laughs) (laughs) 
they need her to be our spokesperson. So, but but everybody at the table, they're like, "Ah, screw you, buddy. You and your furry <laughs> underpants. I don't trust you one lick." And uh, but then they open up uh, machine gun fire. The ladies there open up. And they they're also wearing furry underpants. But, yeah. yeah, his army all have furry underpants. But they uh, shoot the machine guns into the ground just to scare him because he's, hey, I don't want to kill you yet. You know, you're too valuable to me. But uh, this venture cannot fail. And they say and he takes off his mask. And uh, and Sean is like, no wonder my cat's uh, interruption. And uh, then we see Mandrill reveals himself. I am Mandrill, monkey man. (laughs) Be cool. Yeah. I like how he looks here better than on the cover. Yes, definitely. He, look, he look, looks more uh, baboonish here. Yeah, the cover's kind of flat, whereas here you can tell that his face, his face is very elongated and baboon-like. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so he's like, hey, uh, he, these are my loyal followers, my converts to a religion of hate. Like these finely <laughs> muscled females. They worship me. They have allowed themselves to be tattooed in my image. What say yeah. you now? Again, sucks to be them. <laughs> like their lives are ruined. <laughs> Tough to get a job after this, you know. Yeah. In the interview, hey, uh, so where did you work before? I <laughs> uh, never worked for Mandrel. I don't know what you heard, <laughs> but I never worked for Mandrill, <laughs> even though my face is tattooed with the symbol of Mandrill. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Shauna, uh, her leopards. Now they jump on these ladies. Like they just they murdered these ladies because I mean. <laughs> Can leopards? They don't really just knock you over. They they're mauling yeah. them. They knock you over. Wait, I mean, yeah. I don't know. If they have like a you know like a police dogs get trained because they have a word they'll call them off when once they've done enough damage. I don't know that these have that. Maybe they have little plastic uh, rubber caps on their claws. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> they're just spitting bean bags at them. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> Then Patrick tries to punch Mandrill, and he, he punches him. Mandrill just laughs. He's like, he calls him a witless fool. You can't hurt me. I'm a monkey man. <laughs> and uh, now this is where Shauna makes a an, un, an unusual decision as a hero. Mm-hmm. Reinforcements are coming in, and Shauna yep. says, "I'll never be able to fight all these off by my own." So uh, you know what? I'm just going to get the hell out of here, and uh, see my you guys later. Save the others is to get out my, <laughs> alive myself. <laughs> so, yeah, she just strands the others there. Questionable yeah. decision. Uh, and again, she she's just, just wearing she's wearing no shoes and a bikini essentially, and she just jumps through a plate glass window, <laughs> just dives out of it. <laughs> she should be cut to shreds by now, I think. <laughs> uh, she lands. Her cats follow her, and they run and they they steal a jeep. Or I guess that's the jeep that they had. They drove in Patrick's jeep, right? Mm-hmm. So they take the Jeep and she says, I just got to get back to the city. But they're following her now. They're chasing her. Uh-oh. She's like, I just if I can just get back to the why, why is she just gets back to the city? Does the chase end? I was confused by that. As uh, well. They've mentioned it at the end, I think, where like, um, wait, that's the city up ahead. They can't risk being seen. They'll have to turn back. I don't know who. In the oh, city yeah. Why? Is gonna yeah. yeah. He's going to take over they... all these countries anyway. So yeah, what does it matter? <laughs> There's two ladies with baboon tattoos. Who cares? Just yeah. you know, if they see them. All right. I guess. I feel like he's a monkey man. He already stands out enough. Like he's got a lot of attention on him. I'm assuming. <laughs> so they they chase her, and uh, they're in normal cars. She's in like a jeep, so she turns off the road to go through the rough terrain there. And uh, she's like, "Oh, this is. Hopefully, I'm strong enough to steer over. You were strong enough to steer a rhino. I think you can steer <laughs> a jeep. Don't worry." <laughs> Uh, but little does Shauna know that, uh, she's cutting through the trees, but the road act just serpentines down the hill and like, so they're still right behind her. So, yeah, it was like a big waste of time. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but, why thankfully, she hates <laughs> but thankfully, Jank, she makes it to the city. So yep. they, the, uh. I don't know who's in that car. If it's man, yeah, it's just if it's Mandrill or Jim. I think it's just the two two of the ladies. Yeah, winner. Well, I, I think there's got to be at least three because she said one says sisters. The Mandrill will be much displeased. Yeah, so there's a bunch of these ladies in the car. Yeah, 
And but as soon as she gets to the uh, turn off to the city, they just turn the other way. And they're like, oops. <laughs> I, yeah. Well, I don't get it. I don't no, get it. that's pretty weak. Yeah, pretty weak logic. But again, keep in mind, a lady who was writing this who had never written anything before. <laughs> and her right. her soul, soul credentials for doing this job is that she was a lady. That's the only reason she was hired. <laughs> yeah. So uh, she, thank Shana, you I was going back to these days. <laughs> so Shauna opens up the door to her uh, apartment there, and there's a fella sitting in a chair, and he's smoking a cigarette, and it's all in shadows. She says, a man here? And he says, come in, Shauna. I've been waiting for you. And he says, no, wait, the light, turn on the light. Because her cats are already mauling him. And uh, she says, that voice, it can't be. It's it, it's you. Jakuna Singh of S.H.I.E.L.D.? <laughs> yeah. now, you know, have you ever encountered Jakuna Singh of S.H.I.E.L.D. before? Nope. Apparently, okay. he first appeared in Shauna number two. And I'm guessing he probably didn't have many appearances outside of Shauna. Yeah. Because- He's not one of the shield agents I've ever remembered seeing. He looks pretty cool though. He looks uh like yeah, an Indian stinks. fella with like a beard and a mustache and a red turban. Yeah. Uh, pretty cool. Very Indiana yeah. Jones yeah. before Indiana Jones. Yeah, and he had a knife. Uh, he pulled a knife out too. Uh, He's going to fight the cats and he says, "All right, I've got get your cats to get off me there." Cuz she's like, "All right, hey, we know you." And uh he says, "Hey, I, you see, besides your dinner partners, uh, he had other prisoners, including one of the wealthiest men in all Africa, Gerald O'Hara. My father. Yeah, uh oh. So, what is uh, this fella's plan, Jank? <laughs> this may be why you don't see this guy a lot, because he's got a terrible fucking plan. <laughs> Instead of just like, hey, I'll get some shield agents, we'll go in force and just get these guys out of there. He's like, no. Shana, you go in there. Get yourself captured. <laughs> and then when you manage to, like, you know, free everybody, then we'll show up. <laughs> yeah, this I is, guess the cleanup. <laughs> it's a terrible plan. Yeah. This is yeah. insane. Yeah, I guess you get, I, like, I, a homing bracelet to, to yeah. wear. Yeah, I guess I skipped the part there. He's He's been in uh, hunting down the mandrel and they're ready to apprehend him and so here's the plan and blah, blah, blah. not ready enough apparently yeah <laughs> they can so just go she, in and do it he's just a monkey man <laughs> so you remember that big car chase we just saw well forget it because it didn't matter because she wants to get captured now so she drives yeah. back to the compound and she's trying to sneak in with her two leopard friends and she gets sniped by someone from the bushes with a tranquilizer dart first her cats get shot she's like holy shit my cats are dead and she's like oh wait <laughs> and then she gets shot She's like, oh, it's just a tranquilizer. Oh, well, that's good. And uh, and she passes out. Next thing you know, she wakes up on, like, an operating table, strapped down. Mm-hmm. And there's a creepy guy. Looks like he's copping a feel. You know, yeah, like, sure does. Yeah. And uh, he says, I am Professor Sketcher. <laughs> he also manufactures comfortable shoes. Uh, your humble servant, Miss Shauna. My friend, the mandrill, did not exaggerate. Never have I seen a finer female specimen. I mean, accurate. These guys are really <laughs> creepy. Though. It's my privilege to adorn your sculptured face with my lovely mandrill tattoo. Yeah, he's going to give her the face tattoo. I, I mean, I, guess I didn't put it together before now, but his name is Sketcher, and he's going to do a tattoo on her face. <laughs> Sketch on her face. <laughs> he should be on Ink Master. This guy's already got a good name for it. But here's my, uh, you know, again, I'm not an evil scientist or an evil tattoo artist or anything. But if I want to tattoo the face of a lady, Mm -hmm. I'd do it when she's passed out through the tranquilizers. I wouldn't wait till she wakes up and then try and tattoo her face. That is a good point. Because, you know, it seems like he's (laughs) just sitting around with that uh, that, uh, tattoo guy just waiting for her to wake up. And then he's like, oh, now I can very, very short acting poison. Yeah, <laughs> like 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. All right. So but what is uh, Shauna? What does she do, though, Jack? Uh, she just busts out of her manacles, just kind of, you know, tenses up and breaks through it. And she says, not only do you grossly underestimate my strength, you even presume to choose my cosmetics for me. She punches him right in the head. Yeah. She says, you men amaze me before all that. You men, stupid men. <laughs> Punches him right in the face. And then yep. uh, the mandrel comes in, and she starts fighting the mandrel, too, Jack. 
Yeah, it gives him a two hand slug in the belly. <laughs> That's unusual <laughs> technique. Yeah, unusual. Yeah. Uh, slips out of her the rest of her bonds, and she frees her cats. And uh, turns out Mandrill releases a bunch of monkeys. So now I got monkey on cat fights. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty great. <laughs> He's unleashed a cage of real mandrels. And while my namesakes create my diversion, I take my prisoners and flee. And there goes Mandrel jumping out the window. Yeah. So She sees that he's escaping in a truck with five men captive. That fifth man must be my father. Yeah, so she's chasing after his little truck there. And uh, she – does she get in that uh, Jeep? Yeah. Uh, no, she just kind yeah, of runs she, after him. <laughs> but then, oh yeah, she's in the yeah, yeah she's she does. Yeah, yeah, they skip a little bit there, but uh, she does get in the jeep there, and um, she kind of crashes into him. So he has to jump out of the jeep. So now Mandrill's just running on foot, you know, mm-hmm. and he can control women, but he can't control this woman because she's a she devil, you know. That's right. And I, we get a close-up of uh, Mandrill's face and a thought balloon. He's like, it's true. Like me, she must be other than human. Her speed, incredible. Yeah. And we get and a shot of, uh, while Shauna's running, it looks like the uh, the top of her bikini has come unattached. Like the back well, is, you know, come unstrapped. Well, I think the way it's designed, like... It's weird because I think those straps, the teeth thing, they're what holds it on her. And then mm-hmm. that – those are side straps that connect to the underpants. Yeah, but it goes like straight down almost. Like I know. It's fender. very weird. It's very <laughs> yeah. weird. But like if you look at other panels, like you can see the side straps connecting to the underpants. So, yeah, I don't know how this costume works. But <laughs> yeah. it's awesome. You know? I like it. Yep. I got no complaint. Yeah. I think it was designed by uh, uh, Andy Sedaris. So, <laughs> the deep movie cut for you. Yeah. All right. Totally so Jack, out of at some point, Mandrill jumps over the fence over a wall there, and because uh, he says not even the strongest of female warriors can vault this ten foot wall, and he jumps. But on the other side, what's on the other side? A bunch of actual Mandrills who yeah. uh, apparently don't like him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're not I guess, I, guess I should have picked. I guess I should have picked up on the fact he can't control monkeys by because they just beat the fuck out of him. All these mandrels. His <laughs> sudden appearance has startled them, so they're just like going to town on him. But now Shauna has to make a decision. What do I do? Do I just let them beat up Mandrill, or do I uh, fight the monkeys? So she fights the monkeys. Yeah, that's a weird choice. Like I thought she loves animals and shit. Like they're just doing, you know. I mean, Mandrill's pure evil. <laughs> <laughs> the I monkeys are just doing what the monkeys do. I like the – it's a great panel, and I like the monkey in the bottom left corner, the expression on his face. He's like, holy shit, this lady's tough. He just got punched. See him? Yep. <laughs> She's swinging one monkey by the ankle into the other monkeys. <laughs> it's pretty great. <laughs> uh, and then uh, that that uh, that Singh guy, what, Jack, oh, I can't remember his first name. Yeah. Jack, he comes in to get all the credit at the end. Yeah. yeah. So what did this guy do exactly? Not a goddamn thing. <laughs> he takes them into custody, but then uh, apparently like she's like, wait, where's my dad? And, like, he's not here. And the other prisoner, the one guy says, the other prisoner was, he was spirited away last by the Mandrill's armed women. And she's like, oh, man, I almost had it. So she goes over to Mandrill and is like, where is he, Mandrill? Tell me. Or empty threats, she devil. He is my prisoner and will remain so until I re- exact my revenge. That's where it ends. We don't find out what happens to her next. <laughs> next issue, the Necra, Priestess of Darkness. About that. Yeah. Well, there is. Now, if you uh, go to the next page, it's the uh, reader mail, and it's called Shauna's She Mail, <laughs> which <laughs> seems like a questionable choice of words. <laughs> yeah. But nothing that went through. <laughs> no, they did not. <laughs> Not at all. All right, so there it is. Shauna the Sheet of Issue 4 from 1972. Uh, let's start with the writing here. Carol Seuling. These are the only four books that she wrote in her old comic book writing career. Uh, and she was not a writer. She did not uh, claim to be a writer. Um, so 
what do you think of her work here? <laughs> um, it it wasn't great. I didn't. I wouldn't say I hated it by any means. It was fine. It was just kind of lightweight to me. Like it never packed any kind of punch. But I wasn't mad about reading it or anything like that. It just uh, I was never that invested. I would say. Yeah. Again, Gerber came in and did additional dialogue. So, oh, uh, who knows what dialogue was hers and what was his? But uh, I'm guessing she had the plot and the story. So mm-hmm. it, it opened with the action scene of the rhino. I like that. Got got us involved. I like the idea of showing up to the dinner, mandrills there, whatever. I, I think the problem is the second half, the the car chase yeah. to get away. Then the she meets, shield plan. Yeah. To get, no, you got to go back and get yourself captured. <laughs> and then the shield guy doesn't do anything anyway. So, yeah, it kind of goes off the rails there in the second half. But, you know, as a someone who wasn't a writer, again, didn't claim to be a writer, didn't want to be a writer, apparently, because she didn't do anything else. So uh, she did fine, you know, as a but yeah, it's serviceable rookie mistakes, you know, rookie mistakes. But mm-hmm. uh, but again, at this time in comics, they're letting pretty much anyone who liked comics write comics. <laughs> they're just <laughs> that's how Roy Thomas got his job. And shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it is what it is. All right, so the art, Ross Andrew. I love Ross Andrew. I thought he did a great job here. Shauna looks awesome. There's some, there's some, you know, wonky panels here or there, but overall, I, I this is what comic book art should be. This is what I grew up on as a little kid reading John Romita Senior Spider Man and then Ross Andrew Spider Man. So this is what I, when I think great comic book art, this is what I'm thinking of right here. You know. Wow. It's, I wouldn't go that high, but I certainly yeah. did enjoy it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, just the style, yeah. the general style yeah. and stuff. This is what – yeah, there's definitely – he's done better work than this. But just the feel of it. Like, this is oh, – yeah, this is this is great comic book art right here. So I'm a big fan. I saw that apparently at some point Shauna, like, I don't know if she actually went out with or almost went out with Peter Parker. I'm guessing that might have been during Ross Andrews' tenure because it sounds like something Probably. he would do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that also sounds like a Marvel team up situation as well. Oh, that could be too. Yeah. Because we got to do, we got to read more Marvel team ups because there are some amazing stories in the Marvel team ups, like just random Spider Man and Wasp, Spider Man and whoever, you know? And, uh, yeah, that's true. I'll talk about another one in a minute here because I almost picked it. Next week. <laughs> oh, uh, Mandrill uh, as a villain, I like he's a monkey man. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. So that's that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Not a big fan of his outfit. The furry no. pants and the boots. But, uh, no, it's not great. But I don't know what kind of costume you would give a monkey man, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was also confused, like you said, they don't really establish what his powers are in this, so uh I don't know. I like yeah, the, the plan. potential for the mandrel here, it wasn't really delivered upon. <laughs> I, I like that. it. I like his plan of overthrowing three African nations, having an army of ladies with machine guns, and he tattoos their faces. Uh-huh. That's pr- that's pretty cool. I like all that. You know? I mean, maybe you start with one nation, see how that goes first. <laughs> now you got it. When you're a monkey man, you got to think big. You got to think big. <laughs> yeah, take over three. Uh, so I like a lot of it, but again, just the the plot and how it unfolded in the second half of this book is kind of a train wreck. But, um, yeah. you know, whatever. Still enjoyable. I still enjoyed it. I'm still giving it a set. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Because it has Ross Andrew. I love the art. It has Shauna mm-hmm. and a little bikini. And it's got monkeys. So. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. That checks a lot of boxes for me. <laughs> I'm going to go right down the middle and give this one a five. A five. Uh, I like the art more than the writing. Um, Overall, I thought it was fine. I'm not going to. Like, say you guys should run out and read it or anything like that, because definitely the plot has some some problems. Yeah. Keep in mind, if there weren't monkeys in this book, it'd be a five or a six. But because there's monkeys, yeah. it's a seven. That's just the way it is. Just the way it is. Yeah. All right. All right. I can't argue. So there that. it is. Monkeys and cats. So, got all, <laughs> yes. Got everything. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> and one of the cats was black. So, there you go. I love the black cats. <laughs> All right, so ask John of the She Devil next week. It's my choice. I always like to, uh, you know, connect the choices together and play off one of the other. So right. this week we did a Lady of the Jungle who uh, has leopards. Next week we're going to do a lady who basically is a leopard or a tiger. Oh. Huh? 
And this story we're doing <laughs> is a book. I didn't even know this comic existed. I never heard of it until I was looking for books to read for next week. Marvel Chillers, issue seven from 1976. That's right. Marvel Chillers, issue seven. Did you ever hear of this wow. title? No. I never heard of it either. It only lasted seven issues. So this is the final <laughs> okay. one. Big finale. And the first two issues featured some mystical guy I never heard of. And then I think the next five all featured Tiger. Okay. So, yeah, Tiger is the, the main star here. Also, Red Wolf is in this book. He helps her out. Because I was going to pick a Red Wolf book, and uh, this was Two Birds with One Stone. And look at that, Tiger and Red Wolf. And together, right. they are fighting Super Scroll. Oh, wow. Yeah, how awesome <laughs> is that? That doesn't it's seem like, like something. Out of their league on that one. <laughs> yes, it doesn't seem like a natural <laughs> choice there. But, yeah, Tiger and Red Wolf are fighting Super Scroll. This is amazing. Yeah, that sounds good. Not only that, it is written by Jim Shooter. Ooh. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, yeah. This will be good. I forget who did the art. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll talk about that next week. But uh, yeah, I forget who did the art. But Jim Shooter wrote it. Because um, I almost picked a Marvel team up. Because I wanted to pick something about a, a villain or something we didn't do. And I was oh, Super Scroll. I like Super Scroll. Yeah. So I saw he was in this. He was also in a Marvel team up where Spider Man and Captain Marvel or Ms. Marvel back in the day. Ms. Yeah, and, yeah. Good one. Fought Super Scroll. But I'm like, you know what? No, let's go Red Wolf and Tiger. Because Tiger is like Sheena. So boom, look at that. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I like that a lot. So Marvel <laughs> of, uh, now that we're talking about this uh Tiger versus uh you know Super Scroll. Um this Kazar series that I've been reading it looks like at a certain point, like the, his fighting his brother and his brother's got this mysterious boss, um, who, who's clearly Thanos. And it looks like, yeah, oh. later in the series, he fights Thanos. Kazar versus Thanos, which. Why is, Th- why is Thanos <laughs> hiring employees from Earth to like just do stuff? What's he is? Yeah, I think it turned, well, he's like trapped in another dimension, but then I read that apparently that's not the real Thanos. It's like a, you know, clone or something. Yeah, oh, good lord. I think right. basically Jim Starlin had to come up with that because he was like, "This is stupid. Why is Thanos fighting Thanos. Kazar? We need to make this be somebody else, so it's not the real Thanos." Uh, or maybe he's the guy he bought the helicopter from. Remember the Thanos copter. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> that could be. He was hey, yeah, hey. rich industrialist. Hey, another tie-in with Tiger in uh, Shauna is. Of course, Tiger is actually the lady who was in Beware the Claws of the Cat. That lady became Tiger. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, she was just like a like a martial arts lady who had kind of you know fake claws or whatever, and somehow became a cat lady. Yep. So <laughs> weird yeah. how that happens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll fill you in on the whole story next week here on Flea Market Fantasy. All right. So until then, don't get any jank on you. <laughs>